So as, as a, component, a component of our human rights work around the world in defense uh, of, uh, uh, of values that we uh, hold dearly in Canada and we like to see expressed more widely around the world, my country continues to work at both the multilateral and the bilateral levels to promote and protect uh, human rights, uh, including uh, of all people. We are a member of the UN LGBT, uh, LGBTI uh, core group uh, at, uh, in New York, and we uh, continue to raise LGBTI rights within the context of the UN Human Rights Council's Universal Periodic Review, a peer, peer mechanism uh, to uh, review. Uh, specific recommendations are made for countries to revise their laws and their policies and their regulations to strengthen human rights of all citizens, no matter <clears throat> what their sexual orientation. I hope this conference today is more than a moment. I look forward to the day that none of us have to convince people that we are worthy of our own basic human rights. May we dare to dream, to desire, and to fight for equality every day. Now some 30 countries have opened marriage to all couples. Taiwan was the first jurisdiction to open marriage in Asia. Perhaps Thailand, my home, will be number two. There is still, quote, open hostility, end of quote, by some UN members and passive resistance to reform by many others. But we are winning at the international level and at the regional level in spite of regression in Brunei, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Uh, they're vulnerable and marginalized groups. You might see, but it mentions women, children, and elderly, persons with disabilities, migrant workers. But how come it doesn't mention other sectors? Okay? And the answer there is, well, there, there has been a big debate. Okay? Big debate. And in that big debate, they wanted to ensure that they accommodate um, other, other member states who are not comfortable with certain groups okay and I'll, I'll be honest lgbtqi or at the time the lgbt okay is a group where not all member states are still comfortable with okay but they wanted to push an opening for this and the opening is vulnerable and marginalized groups okay together with the term gender up here so my last slide before my thank you slide, because I ran out of time, is how can ASEAN human rights mechanisms protect and promote the rights of LGBTQI persons? At the moment, there is none. Okay, There is none. I will not kid anyone here. But I do hope that with the discussion, I just wanted to point out two things. One is that it has always been a struggle for human rights in any in any part of the world and here in ASEAN this is the reason why I mentioned the milestones is just to show that all we need to do is look for an opening be persistent and engage continuously engage and let us be patient that positive steps forward will happen the second point here is that it is very important because we need to set the standards and we know that in ASEAN member states many local or domestic countries have very low standards so we need to up it a bit here within the region to increase and to uh, help raise the standards especially for those countries which are very much like me.
another opportunity that actually we have a culture related LGBTIQ uh, like uh, in Sulawesi we have a bisu uh, and then uh, Sulawesi in one region in Sulawesi also recognize five gender so it's still um, um, use culture as um, media as support to in mainstreaming uh, LGBTIQ in Indonesia and then we still have wonderful networking uh, as uh, if Komnas HAM we have uh, fully support from Asia Pacific um, Forum and then from other um, national human rights institution and we actively investigate human rights violations against LGBTQI plus community. The commission also conducts promotion activities to advance LGBTQI plus rights, such as the Human Rights Capacity Building Project with Outright International and Asia Pacific Forum. This focused on SOGIS and involved investigators, lawyers, and gender focal persons. We also recognize pride champions in government with the hopes of increasing LGBTQI plus allies in government. The commission continues to take part in lobbying for the passage of the SOGI Equality Bill in Congress. So it, it's basically this, so paving the way for inclusive workforce, reviewing and revisiting your policies, invest to be inclusive, you dedicate a team or a champion um, for this, and uh, you're ready, and be ready to evolve, empower, and embrace change um, so that uh, you, you have your, your, your workplace as a diverse and inclusive workplace. We need to find the right message with limited resources and want to make sure that we won't waste our money or on wrong direction. So the results showed us that the most important values are uh, harmony, mutual health, and respect. So actually as an activist, we all, always say that um, like fairness or like uh, equality, but that's not the, the language or that's not the core values that uh, people in the middle age will value. So, okay. So um, instead of using terms like equality or human rights, we use lots of life stories and slogans related to res respect every family to communicate with the public. So uh, the strategies we use in the referendum, including like media campaign, dialogues, and rallies. Mm -hmm.